Hello and welcome everyone. I'm absolutely delighted to be speaking today at the All-Ireland Maternity and Midwifery Fest at Deval about my research on domestic violence and pregnancy in Ireland and women's routes to seeking help and safety. So the outline of my presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about domestic violence and pregnancy in Ireland and what we know about it. I'm going to talk about the research study I undertook and the findings, really focusing on women's routes to seeking help, safety and support in relation to the domestic violence during and after their pregnancies, and the recommendations and implications for maternity care of this research. This uh, research and the topics discussed in it obviously fall under the uh, three sustainable development goals that influence our policy both nationally in Ireland and globally. Number three, good health and well-being that also includes maternal mortality, morbidity and uh, pregnancy. Uh, gender equality, which looks at eliminating all forms of violence against women and strong institutions and strong lawmaking. In relation to domestic violence and pregnancy, uh, the World Health Organization has noted that domestic violence has a number of very serious and potentially fatal outcomes during pregnancy. These can include um, death by murder, suicide, miscarriage, and there's conclusive evidence that domestic violence during pregnancy harms women and infants. A Cochrane review looking at interventions for reducing or preventing domestic violence against pregnant women had documented severe harms and it is noted that domestic violence during pregnancy is a severe public health risk that is also preventable. Donovan and, and his colleagues in the systematic review and meta-analysis concluded that women who've experienced domestic violence or intimate partner violence during pregnancy are at increased risk of having a preterm birth, a low birth weight, a baby or a small for gestational infant. Again, severe harms in relation to domestic violence during pregnancy. So maternity care services in Ireland, as many of you will be familiar with already, is through our network of 19 maternity hospital and units across Ireland. Um, under the maternity and infant care scheme, the mother's entitled to free inpatient and outpatient uh, care. The maternity care is shared between the family doctor or GP and the maternity hospital and obstetrician. And after the birth, the public health nurse visits the mother and baby during the first six weeks. Very importantly, maternity care is one aspect of the healthcare uh, system in Ireland that is free to all residents, not necessarily citizens, in Ireland. And if we think about what it looks like in visualisation, it's about 14 visits um, before and after birth that combine both care from the general practitioner and also then visits to the maternity hospital for mum and then baby. In relation to domestic violence services in Ireland, we have approximately 60 uh, frontline domestic violence and sexual violence services across the country. We have 21 refuges, which are safe, free accommodation for women and children. And we've seen during the past year, the impact of COVID-19 on these services resulting in increased demand. The policy contacts for, uh, for the topics we're looking at today, domestic violence and pregnancy, has very much been influenced by Ireland's ratification of the Istanbul Convention, which has led to new legislation in Ireland, the Domestic Violence Act in 2018, which specifically links uh, lists maternity and pregnancy as a risk factor that courts must be cognizant of. We also have our first ever national maternity strategy, creating a better future together, HICWA standards for safer, better maternity services, and a number of other interventions, including Ireland joining the um, Embrace our MDE confidential maternal death inquiry. What do we know about domestic violence and pregnancy in Ireland in relation to prevalence? Well, the often quoted uh, O'Donnell and colleague study published in 2000, looked at data from the Rotunda Hospital in Dublin for self-completion questionnaires for women, and it found that 12% of the respondents were experiencing domestic violence during a pregnancy. When we looked at a nationally representative survey sample on domestic abuse in Ireland, the SRI and Watson's and Parsons study, about 7% of survey respondents, including men and women, said that pregnancy was a trigger for abusive behaviour or violence in the relationship. And then more recently, the Safe Ireland study I ask are improving needs assessments and victim support. Um, for the 40 women interviewed, 62% of the respondents said that their partner had physically abused them while pregnant. In terms of a, a European context and comparative data, the most recent nationally representative survey data, uh, including uh, women interviewed in Ireland, is the European Union Fundamental Rights Agency, or FRA, survey data looked at violence against women in 28 European countries. The survey interviewed face-to-face -face 100 
1,569 women in Ireland, which is a good size survey sample, and 77% of the sample had children. 15% of this survey sample uh, reported experienced physical or sexual violence by a partner, either current or an ex-partner since the age of 15. When I drilled into this uh, data set, uh, about 4% of the Irish sample had experienced violence during a pregnancy with either a current or previous partner, and 2% of women interviewed reported a miscarriage as a result of domestic or sexual violence. So how did women respond around domestic violence in this survey? Over half of women mostly dealt with it themselves. Some of them told a friend or a family member. However, about a quarter of the women in the survey um, went, who had experienced violence went to their GP or healthcare professional about it, seeking support, advice, help, and treatment for possible injuries. In terms of uh, the barriers to telling people about domestic violence and seeking help, in this survey, shame, embarrassment and privacy were cited as reasons not to tell anybody and not to report or disclose domestic violence, including to the Gardaí or police. Other recent relevant research is by the Irish College of General Practitioners, and they did a postal survey with their members of GPs in Ireland. It's a good size response rate from their membership. And if you recall, GPs are an integral part of the maternity and infant care scheme and provide much of the antenatal care for women in Ireland. However, 97% of the women who were sur uh, GPs who were surveyed and provided care for pregnant patients had not asked them about domestic violence. 70% of the GP respondents had never asked a single pregnant female patient about domestic abuse in their practice. This uh, data leads me on to the research study I want to talk about today, which is a qualitative study. So I talked about survey data. We had a dearth of qualitative or more in-depth data in Ireland around domestic violence and pregnancy. And the aim was to understand the factors that helped women to seek support, safety, protection, um, during pregnancy and after in relation to domestic violence. The data was collected via semi-structured interviews, which also captured demographic details of the women, and the study was granted ethical approval from the Faculty of Health Sciences in Trinity College. Dublin. The domestic violence definition was used for the study, which is based on the Office of the Taunister Report in Ireland. It's a broad definition. It includes as well as uh, physical assault, physical violence, sexual violence, emotional violence, stalking, threats, isolation and financial abuse. And indeed, the definition was um, pregnancy and not maternity in terms of the study recruitment, which meant there could be any outcome, a live birth, termination of pregnancy or miscarriage as a result of the pregnancy for the woman. Women were invited to participate in the study if they'd experienced domestic violence during pregnancy or pregnancies, if they had some form of contact or support um, that they initiated or made contact while pregnant. They were obviously had to be willing and able to take part in the research and were deemed not to be an immediate or current danger from a violence current or ex-partners. Women were interviewed either during their pregnancy or up to five years after their pregnancy approximately. The data collection was challenging. It was very hard to find women who wished to participate in the, the study to begin with. I undertook a number of meetings with domestic violence services across Ireland, and they assisted with study recruitment. I also did a small sample of key informants to help with data triangulation and analysing the data later on in the study. So overall, I interviewed 18 women, 17 of which had given birth in Ireland, one who'd moved to Ireland with very small children and had access to medical and domestic violence services here. The demographic indicators of the study sample were of interest, with a range of ethnicities and nationalities reported, age range as well. Women were interviewed while pregnant and some women had had up to five children. Women had lived in Ireland for varying lengths of time if they were uh, migrant women as part of the study sample. Women had different levels of educational uh, achievements and women were working full-time, part-time on maternity leave, students or job hunting. A specific interest is out of the 19 maternity hospitals in Ireland, women in this study who were interviewed had given birth in 10 of these. Two women had also given birth in the UK and contrasted these experiences with their experiences in Ireland. One woman reported a disability. There was an overrepresentation of migrant women in the study sample, and we know from uh, data from the healthcare pricing offices and the HSE in Ireland that about up to a quarter of women in Ireland uh, giving birth on an annual basis are women who are not Irish nationals. We also know from uh, research uh, data and um, data collected by TUSLA that there's an overrepresentation of migrant women in domestic violence services and refuges. Or 
Migrant women could also be more experience less stigma, less shame, and be more interested in participating in the study and talking to somebody. So what data uh, came from the interviews with these 18 women? Well, the experience of domestic violence was not asked about at all. It was given that women who participated in the study due to their referral and the inclusion criteria had experienced it. However, every single woman I interviewed spoke about the physical violence, the sexual violence, the emotional, verbal, financial abuse that was recounted. Women often reported very serious domestic violence during their pregnancies um, and after. D domestic violence did not decrease during their pregnancies. It seemed to continue as usual during their pregnancies. And no woman interviewed reported that domestic violence ended once they, the baby was born. Two women in the study also reported that their pregnancies were as a result of uh, rape by their abusive partner. However, for all women interviewed, at some point uh, in their life, domestic violence that they were experiencing, the abuse became completely unmanageable. Any kind of hope or inkling of change in their partner's behavior dissipated and went, and she realized herself that she needed to move on and seek help and safety. If we can recognize this point, in particular in healthcare settings, such as maternity care settings, this would be of incredible, immensely support of two women. So the themes that came up in the research are as follows. This is the thematic map, and I'll talk through each of them briefly. A woman was at the center of the study. Finding services was a major theme, women's health, children. A sub-theme of this was social workers and women's interactions with them. Then I wanted to look at the overall inhibitors and how do they emerge in the study data. Migrant women had specific challenges in terms of seeking help, support, and safety. However, what were the enablers for, the enablers for these women who also allowed them to seek help and safety and what pushed them forward in terms of their paths to safety and help? Using domestic violence emerged as a sub-theme as part of these enablers. So the first theme I want to discuss is finding services. So how did women actually engage with domestic violence or specialist services around the abuse they were experiencing? Um, women in most cases self-referred. It took them a while often to find the service that they could access in their locality or uh, where they were um, uh, living at the uh, point of time in their pregnancy or after the birth. And this time was often uh, as misspent with phone calls to services that weren't actually appropriate. Most of the women in the study actually made contact with themselves. They found information online or a few saw a poster for a helpline information. So internet searches and women's friends seem to be a key source of information for women. And despite the fact that the women in the study um, all gave birth in hospitals, all attended their antenatal and postnatal care, health services appear to have a very minor role in terms of the study for women finding um, domestic violence services and supports. Women's health was another thing that emerged strongly in the study data. So this is a self-reported. I didn't look at anyone's uh, medical records or it wasn't a case file analysis study. So I asked women, how was your health during the pregnancy? Women reported immense challenges during after uh, the birth in terms of their health. Only three of them said that their health was good during their pregnancies. And as a result, these women actually had more, less, not less contact with the health services during their pregnancy. In relation to mental health, 10 out of the 18 women reported very negative uh, mental health. Three women actually described suicidal ideation and one woman in the study sample attempted suicide. Two women accessed psychiatric services uh, as part of the study sample. Um, we do know that uh, suicide is a related, uh, uh, is a leading cause of maternal death in Ireland, but there seems to be very little exploration of women's symptoms and presentations of anxiety, depression by the healthcare staff that they were encountering during and after their pregnancy. And this is very worrying. Another major study theme was women's children. So women began to fear for their own safety more and more, but they really feared for the safety of their children or infants. Um, however, domestic violence perpetrators in some of the cases use the threat of reporting women to social workers or to social services or TUSLA in order to have their children removed to make sure that she stayed with them. However, when I think about that point to change for women I interviewed, children and women, their future and safety were a key reason for women to seek safety and help. Women said that they, the children deserve better. That was what was driving me. And two women interviewed had children in foster care. In relation to women's interactions with social workers, very often the maternity social workers in the hospitals that they were uh, giving birth in, four of the women found their social worker interactions enabling and helpful. 
not all women had interactions with social workers or referral to social workers in this study sample. And some women felt that they were paying the price for their partner's abusive behavior uh, via the social workers. In terms of the inhibitors women experienced in relation to seeking help, uh, safety and finding support for domestic violence, a uh, significant internal inhibitor that women reported was shame and stigma. And if you recall, this is one of the things that came up in the Fundamental Rights Agency domestic violence uh, survey in Irish uh, women. Uh, women felt that they were embarrassed about the problem and it seemed to be more significant for the Irish women interviewed in the study than for the migrant women. Also, domestic violence during pregnancy appeared hidden, not being screened or asked about domestic violence during maternity care, which was the experience of the majority of the study sample, and no information visible in many of the places where they were getting maternity health care, such as their GP surgeries or the maternity hospitals, also seemed to really reinforce this hidden taboo or secretive nature of domestic violence uh, and pregnancy. Women also reported the challenges of finding appropriate housing in Ireland. And the sub-theme emerging in this uh, study theme was migrant women. So many of the migrant women interviewed were not familiar. The terminology of refuges, um, domestic violence support services, they weren't know, didn't know how to access them, if they had to pay for them. And the language challenges they had, the isolation they experienced meant that very often seeking help and support was, was harder for them. In terms of the enablers in this study, women uh, drew on external and internal uh, enablers to find and seek safety and support. They do in their inner strength, that motivation for change, that point of change and vision for a safer, uh, happier life for themselves and their children to keep moving forward. They found support and information from a range of services and professional. And every time that a woman got some kind of positive or supportive response, this is immensely enabling and, and drove women forward in, in terms of seeking a safer life. Women had interactions in this study sample with all sorts of uh, positive responses or suggestions or direction around domestic violence. And this included bar uh, volunteers from St. Vincent de Paul, taxi drivers, in one case, a, a woman's local priest, the principal of the school, but any kind of positive response around any kind of sense or disclosure of domestic violence really su was supportive and enabling for women to seek safety and help. As a result, uh, with this help and safety seeking being linked in with domestic violence services or moving into a refuge or calling a domestic violence helpline, women all reported is immensely positive. Now, there is a potential study sample bias due to how the women were recruited for the study, but women really report, use the words helpful and supportive for their experiences with these services. Women were absolutely delighted that the services were free of charge and could be accessed on an ongoing basis for as long as they needed as well too. So when they actually were linked and connected with the domestic violence service, this was hugely enabling and positive for the women interviewed. Overall, the study findings uh, suggest that stigma and shame are an immense barrier to help seeking, especially for Irish women. One woman said, you do feel ashamed about it. Who doesn't want a nice marriage? But the lack of screening information in maternal health care settings was also a significant barrier as well to seeking help. Women felt that it was their own initiative. I didn't know what to look for. I felt helpless. However, any kind of positive professional service contact um, seemed to reinforce and support women seeking help and more help than seeking safety. Women felt that help is there. And once women actually are linked in and connected to their local or uh, regional domestic violence service or refuge, they're incredibly satisfied, especially the migrant women interviewed. So in terms of the recommendations from the study for maternity and healthcare, the importance of uh, repeated universal screening for domestic violence in all maternity healthcare settings, both the maternity hospital and the GP practice setting is impaired. It means that women get asked about domestic violence and how their relationship is um, at least on one occasion in at least one setting and after giving birth to. We need to make these settings disclosure friendly so that information on the services and supports available is visible, it's easy to access, it's legible, it's easy to read if English is not your first language. And women talked about when in the few cases they, they did see signs or posters about domestic violence that this enabled them to reach out and seek support. However, not having privacy in terms of maternity care consultations was absolutely a disincentive for disclosure. We also need to make sure that we're treating the symptoms um, and, uh, that are not caused by pregnancy. We're not making any assumptions that the patient comes first and that symptoms cannot be brushed off as well too. Many of the women had uh, immense health challenges and mental health challenges that seemed to be uh, associated only with the pregnancy and not the violence and abuse and fear that they were living with. 
We also have a unique opportunity in Ireland where we have 19 maternity hospitals and units and 21 refuges. So we can actually make very strong links between the local refuge and domestic violence services and each maternity hospital and unit and develop good, clear referral um, pathways for women between the two. We know the acceptability of screening for domestic violence is well established and is very positive, both through Irish research by Bradley and colleagues and McDonnell and colleagues, um, and also from the European Union Fundamental Rights Agency survey, where women over 90, almost 90% of the sample responded positively to doctors asking women about domestic violence. We also know from a recent Cochrane review that healthcare professionals are in a very unique an important position to identify and assist women during pregnancy about domestic violence and not being screened and asked about it feeds into shame and stigma and makes the issue invisible in Ireland. If we want to save lives around maternal morbidity and mortality, according to the Embrace report, which had a specific chapter on learning from homicides on women who experience domestic abuse, we need to be alert to the signs and symptoms. We need to give women the opportunity to disclose domestic abuse. We need to be aware of pathways and referral routes for care. And we need to display information clearly in the areas where women are accessing their maternity health care. Every single uh, visit to a hospital or to a GP is an opportunity to reach out to a woman, to offer support, referral, information. And all of you are in a unique and a very important position to refer, signpost, support and enable women to seeking a life free of violence and abuse. Thank you very much and specific thanks for the invitation to present today and also to all the women who participated in the research study.